Today, I want to share three easy steps to create a cohesive collage. It's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. I know collages are challenging for many of us, and a lot of us also struggle with inspiration, including myself. One go-to for me is to go through sources that I already have at home. So basically, I'm going shopping in my own stash. So step one is to go through your things and see what inspires you. Great inspirations are, of course, books. A lot of us junk journalers collect a lot of books. <laughs> and another source of inspiration would be magazines. I currently don't have any magazines because I think I threw all of mine out before I moved, but that's fine. I'm going to use this little book here as inspiration. Let me show you this. So this is called Junk Style by Melanie Molesworth and the photos are by Tom Layton. I bought this book from Goodwill and it cost me three euros. I love this book so much. I'll quickly show you some of the amazing photos and then I'll show you the ISBN number in case you want to find this online somewhere. I mean, isn't this just absolute eye candy? I love this vintage style. Every time I look at this, I, I'm in love and it makes me so happy. I'm sure you have books or magazines at home that make you happy just flipping through them. And these are perfect for inspiration. Oh, look at this one. How gorgeous is this photo? It's so simple. To me, these natural tones are so calming. This old distressed wood and the contrast with the black. This would be a perfect inspiration for me. But I chose three other pages today that might work as inspiration. Let me just quickly show you the ISBN number as promised. Here are the ISBN numbers. You can pause and note those if you want to. Originally, it was £7.99. So the three photos that I considered for today's spread as inspiration are these two. Actually, I'm counting this as one because look at these beautiful colors. Look how harmonious they are. This really speaks to me. Love the combination of the blue with this beautiful warm brown. And then we have this muted green here, the white the wood all around is just absolutely stunning. The second one is this double spread here. I mean, how amazing is that? This speaks to me so, so much. I can't even tell you all of these photos here. Again, a lot of natural tones, wood, paper, gold and silver. Absolutely stunning. And the third one is this one here. <laughs> How cute is this with the hats? This would be a really fun one as well. There's a lot you could do with this one. But for today, I'm going to take this as inspiration because this really touched me for some reason. I think when I look at this, it just makes me feel all cozy inside. This is kind of like what I would love probably my craft room to look like. <laughs> I mean, I'm slowly, piece by piece, getting there. I have some beautiful vintage items. And I don't think I will ever have anything like this for the lack of space. But this makes me happy. And because I don't want to use the original, I made a photocopy. So this one, I can tear up and do whatever I want with it without any pressure. Step two is look at your image. Whatever speaks to you. Obviously, it doesn't have to be vintage. It can be anything. It could be floral images. It could be from a fashion magazine. Whatever brings joy to your heart. And then you look at your image. What's the color palette? And what materials are used? And then again, you get to go shopping in your own stash because we know we have a lot of stuff, don't we? <laughs> and you curate some materials that you see in your image. 
So maybe if you chose a fashion theme, maybe you have some fabric in similar colors or colors that will go with the image you chose. Maybe you have buttons, thread, maybe you have pieces of paper with a floral pattern that one of the dresses has. Just go through your things and I'm sure you will find a lot of things that will work with the image you have. So this is what I came up with. And I'll show you why I picked the objects that I picked. Let me put it like this so everything fits in frame. So I have this packaging twine, which is here on two of these packages. I took some stamps, which are not in here, but they have colors that totally go with what I have here. Do you see how well they will go? Some of them have gold. Some I thought maybe I would use as a focal image, like this one, or even this one. I don't even know if I'm going to need a focal image, but I wanted to have some options. So I have one with silver because I have the silver here. I have some vintage tickets and labels. I think all of these would work really well here. You see the colors, it's just perfect. Obviously want some options. Oh, here's another one. This vintage clock here, I thought might go with this label here. Then I have some of these paper pads, which I have been hoarding for years mostly. And these all came from your creative studio boxes. But again, the colors I think will be beautiful. Then I have a piece of packaging paper because we have a little package down here. It's so fun to go through your things and find items that might work. And then because I have these golden buttons, I think I do have golden buttons, but I think mine would probably be too bulky for my journal. So what I thought of instead was, okay, what other golden items do I have which are not necessarily so bulky? So one option would be these eyelets. They're round and gold. But that means I need to punch through the page. So I am not sure that I want to do that. I also have some hole reinforcements that I could color in gold. Since this image is very large and I couldn't fit hardly anything else on the page, I want to cut it into different sections, which is kind of scary, even though it's just a copy, but I love the composition as it is. But I want to, of course, make my own composition. So I need to be brave and cut this apart. Really hard for a control freak like me. <laughs> I'm starting off with an easy one by just cutting this gorgeous image here. This one I don't think I will use, but I can keep it as inspiration. I'm so in love with this. And I don't want to cut it into four equal squares either. What I should probably do if I was courageous enough is just turn it around and cut it. But actually I can kind of see through so that wouldn't really help. If you cut it blind, you would probably get more interesting results. Should I just do it? I'll just do it. Come on, Barbara, you can do it. <laughs> Maybe when you're watching, you're thinking like, what's the big deal? It's just paper. But when you do it yourself, you'll understand. <laughs> oh my goodness. See, I don't know if I'm cutting in the right place. Let's have some fun and see what will happen. Okay, these I like, I like, I like. This one, not so much. I don't have to use all the pieces anyway, so maybe I won't use this one. I'll keep that one on the side for now. But I have these four gorgeous images. As usual, I'm working in the gorgeous journal made by my dear friend, Honey. I'm loving this driftwood here. I showed this in one of my vlogs. I received this from my new friend, Mirella, in the Keeper of, Jour Keeper of Journals, Keeper of Memories <laughs> workshop. As always, 
Honey's Instagram is linked below. And as always, I have to remind you that she does not sell her journals, <laughs> even if we would all want her to. <laughs> I have already picked out a page, otherwise we would be here way too long. It's this one because this one here isn't very inspiring to me. I don't really like what's happening here. <laughs> so let's change that. Step three is to play with your elements to see how you could arrange them in a pleasing way. So maybe these are too much because this seems like a lot to me at the moment. I know I definitely want this one. I want them all, but I think it's just too much. I could potentially like move one over here to kind of, oh, you can't see, so that it kind of goes over to this side as well. Maybe I could even just put this one here. Actually, that would look really cute, wouldn't it? Oh, I like that. I might have to trim this down. This is a bit big. Loving this, loving this. Those are going to be here for sure. I'm going to trim this in half. That's a lot better, actually. We could, of course, move more elements over here. Let's just make a double spread. That gives us more options. So the tricky thing is how do we arrange them so that it looks pleasing. Definitely want this package showing. Just play around with them and see what you like. Oh, I could just make a shape like this. That seems fairly balanced because I have two rectangular objects on a vertical. I have two round objects on this vertical. That totally works for me. And what also helps is that I don't have these lined up in any way. So you see all of these edges are staggered. That gives it a beautiful dynamic, and I'm super happy with this here. Love the brown background. That really makes them come out. Now we can take some more of these elements. Maybe I'll take them out and see how we can play with these. For this paper, I thought what might be cute is to make like a mini package. Obviously, I don't want it too bulky, but maybe I can have a few pieces of cardboard and then wrap them and put some twine. Maybe I have a thinner one around it. Wouldn't that be cute? But I can leave that for later. I can just sit that on top of other elements. So let's start with the bigger elements. They will go more on the background. I kind of want to cover up most of this here. I don't want much of that showing. I do love this one a lot. Maybe I can just put that underneath here. Yep. Not sure about this one. Let me put this one on this side. This is an easy one. We could just maybe put that here. So this is where you just have to play around and see what you like, what you don't like. I don't like any crazy shapes. So I'm usually going to go for rectangles because that's what works for me. I'm not sure I'm going to be happy with how busy this looks. We'll just keep going. We can always make changes. This mustard yellow goes really well together with this gold. Okay, so now in theory, I have everything covered. Maybe we keep going with some smaller pieces. These two are really similar colors. So I definitely want to include this and I want to put this not so close to it, but I want to put it like on a diagonal again. Maybe up here. You see how these connect? And maybe I should take these off so that we see the whole spread together. 
yeah i like this gray here and this is actually green but i think in a camera it looks gray so you have this here we have the grayish blue tone here and here so we have a triangle which really works well this color here on the next page also really works well that totally ties into the whole feeling of the spread so what i also like about this is because this is so busy this is a lot more calm and i feel feel that that kind of balances the spread so i probably won't do anything here but it means that we can add some more fun things here so i'm always looking what color do i have so this is a similar color to here and here right i don't see it anywhere else here so that means i have them two here so this one should go somewhere here either on this side or on this side the triangle rule really works in collages for example like this do you see that there's our triangle it's perfect also this here ties into that so this now is one color even though it's from two different pieces your eye notices this as one that's why it works and also here because these two are so close together they count as one i, I hope i'm making sense here <laughs> so let's look at the gold we have the gold here again this is one entity we have the gold here. Well, actually, there's one more here. But do you see how much more dominant these are? Because there's more of them. So what we could do is add some more real gold down here to make your eye notice that a little bit more. And it needs to be something round in order to work. So, may whoops. so maybe this eyelet would work. Maybe we could add several. Let's check what's on the back. It is a pocket, but that's okay. I wouldn't mind punching through that because we could still use the pockets until here. So maybe if we add one, two, three, let's see what that would look like. That would definitely pull our attention here. But what I don't like is these are right underneath each other. So it would probably be better to go one, two, three do you see how that works better because this has a diagonal now so we have an uneven triangle this here is a bit too empty for me i don't really like how that looks so what could we put here if again we look at our colors i see a green here maybe i could use another green let's see what i have for my curated items so i have these items here the one that would go best with this green, I think, is this stamp. Or also this would be okay. So let's add the stamp here. Or maybe turn it. Yeah, like that. And then I want a third one. Probably somewhere here. Maybe like right there. One, two, three. I'm not saying you always need threes in your collages, but if you're not sure about where to place things, then look for threes. So I am quite happy with this, loving all these neutral tones. So I'm going to glue everything down that I have so far. Then we'll have another look and see what else, if anything, we want to add. My choice of glue for today is Art Glitter Glue. Just because I know it's not going to warp my paper, it's easy to use. So let's take these off. I know where they will be and I will use my top-down gluing method because otherwise I think I'll go crazy with the amount of pieces I have here. So I'll start with the one that's most on top. And glue that right down. That way I've already connected now two papers or three actually, counting the top one. I'll rub away the excess with a cloth and I can go ahead and glue down this one. Now by gluing this one down, I'm already also connecting this ticket here. And I can just lift this one and glue the ticket to the other one as well. And now we have all of our elements connected, which makes collage life so much easier. And now I can just glue anything else down that is not glued down yet. Whoops, properly. So 
So that's one side done, easy peasy. And I'll do the same thing for the other side. Okay, something weird happened here. <laughs> you see this here? This was definitely not how I had planned it. So I'm going to have to fix that. But first, let's make sure all of this is glued down properly. So now everything is connected and I can just glue down the whole thing. So next I'm going to mark the holes for my eyelid punch. left behind two and three actually that looks quite nice on this side as well <laughs> so i don't want everything to be so flat because that's kind of boring so let's bring in some raised elements so remember i mentioned i want to try to make my own little package so i have this little piece of cardboard i'm going to cut this into three equal pieces Actually, two is plenty. I don't need to create unnecessary bulk. So let's glue those together. And then let's wrap that in our construction paper and make a little package out of it. That's really fun. <laughs> I think anything miniature is fun. Usually I would put tape, of course, but I'm just going to use the glue because it's right here. <laughs> okay, for these I'm going to use a little bit of a stronger glue. I'll use this craft glue, which is thicker. Let's clamp those ends down until that glue grips. So I think, yeah, this is good to go. These are stuck down and now we just need to add some twine. So I found this one, which is thinner. So let's just wrap that around. Snip off the ends. How cute. It's quite bulky because of the knot especially. I'm gonna do this differently. That's better. Okay, so I need a space for this. This kind of looks empty, doesn't it? Remember I had that clock? Or also this stamp here would work. Should have done that before I put that thing on. Oh, that's cute. I'm just gonna do that. Maybe secure the stamp a little bit. That's just adorable. I've never done that for a collage. So we need to find a place for it. This really stands out. So this needs to be somewhere not too far on the edge. I do need to cover this up. But you know what this does? Do you see now that instead of this being the third one to these two, this is now the third one. So we have this triangle here. I might totally be confusing you with my triangles and I'm sorry if that's the case. <laughs> At least one other element I want to add is, so you see we have this thread spool and the needle and I thought we could add some thread. So one option would be one of these. I found these quite a long time ago at the flea market. I love these, I've been hoarding these 
I think it would have to be a light color. These are too dark. This is too brown, although this brown works really well with this brown here. But then I'd need a third one. Not necessarily, actually, because it's too far away from this one, maybe. I don't know. I don't have a reason for it. But for some strange reason, I would be okay if there just being one of these. Or, I think these are pretty much the same. This one, interestingly, doesn't work. So it would either be this one or I also have this one here. I could obviously dye this, but maybe the white could work. I don't know why I'm automatically placing it here. Yeah, it wants to go here. So what do we think? The white or the brown? Oh, that's a hard one. Actually, it's not a hard one. I like this one and it is more flat. And we can, of course, also add a needle in here. So because we have one here, I don't need all of these needles. I never use all of these anyway. Let's take one of these. I have so many of these. And let's stick that in there in a way that hopefully I'm not going to poke myself later when I flip through this. How do I do that? <laughs> there, I'll just stick it into the cardboard. That should be okay. And I'll glue that down there. Oh, that makes me happy. So let's glue our 3D elements down. If only the glue would come out. <laughs> okay, second try. Yep. This might be the bulkiest element of my journal so far. <laughs> and once you look at your spread and you realize it makes you happy, then you should stop. <laughs> stop adding things and give yourself a pat on the back for creating something beautiful. Is it too harmonious? What I really like about this is that at first glance, you can't even tell which elements are 3D and which are not. You'd have to look pretty closely. I think that's really fun. So go shop in your craft supplies and create a fun collage. Thank you for keeping me company. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.